What's going on guys? Welcome back to the cabin. Well tonight we're actually going to cook a stuffed meatloaf. I actually got some friends coming over tomorrow to help me cut a lot of these big pine trees around the cabin here. That way I can start sawmilling them up for the cabin renovation coming soon. Well one of them that's coming, his name's Gary from Simple Life Reclaim. If you haven't checked those guys out, I'll put the link right here. Check it out after this video. And uh, they're coming to help me with the trees and one of his favorite, favorite meals of all time is meatloaf. So I'm going to cook meatloaf tonight. I'm going to do a little bit of a twist on it though. I'm actually going to stuff the meatloaf with some Velveeta cheese and also some brown rice and onions. We're just going to use some seasoning salt, some garlic salt, some pink Himalayan salt, some black pepper. And we're going to go with the Montreal steak seasoning right here. That'll give it a smoky kind of uh, flavor. We're also going to cook it on the big green egg. It's over here preheating right now. We're going to smoke it. It's probably going to take about two and a half hours, I would say, for this whole recipe to come together. And that's just because I'm going to cook it a little slower over here on the smoke to get a real good smoke flavor to it. I have not particularly tried this whole stuffed recipe before. I have done stuffed meatloaf before, but never with brown rice. I was going to put jalapenos in this, guys, to make it a little spicy or give it a little spice, but I forgot the jalapenos at the little self-checkout thing or whatever. So somebody got on some free jalapenos. Let's go ahead and get some potatoes cut up in the water. I've already got the water going over there in the back and also get the brown rice in the water as well. Go ahead and get those two cooking, and then we'll start mixing up the meat and preparing to actually stuff the meatloaf. All right, now we got the ground chuck in the bowl. We're going to go ahead and add the seasonings. We're going to go ahead and chop up some onions and go ahead and mix it all in real good. Then we'll put it on the cutting board here and we'll kind of make our shape and do a tunnel so we can actually stuff the rice and the cheese on the inside. Then we'll kind of fold it up over it and then put it in the smoker and let the big green egg <laughs> do its thing. We're going to start with the seasoning salt. I always just kind of do it by what I'm thinking. I don't really use measurements too much unless I'm baking. It all really depends on you. How spicy, how bland do you like your food? Me, I like quite a bit of spice. So I typically use quite a bit of spices whenever I'm cooking. Can never go wrong with some black pepper. And use the Montreal steak seasoning. Now I'm going to use quite a bit of this because I really want that flavor to kind of stand out. Now we got to cut the onion. Now as far as the onion goes, you can cut it to whatever size you like. If you like bigger chunks of onion in your meatloaf, then go ahead and do bigger chunks. Um, a lot of people don't like onion, so whenever I don't know if they like onion or not, I typically cut it a whole lot smaller so they never even know it's there. I try to do as simple as recipes as possible. For the guys that are new here, I'm 100% off grid up on top of a mountain here in Arkansas. And I cook most of my food outdoors. Most of the time it's on the big green egg or the little hibachi that I got over there. I cannot wait for this winter to come and fall to come because I'm gonna start cooking on the fire pit as well. And I'm looking forward to that. But right now, it is way too hot to have a fire. Alright. I'm using a little over half of that. 
close to three quarters of that onion that I'm going to mix in here. I got about four pounds of hamburger meat here. Um, that seems like a lot, but hamburger meat will shrink up a little bit. And I am going to eat some for dinner tonight. And then also we're going to have this for lunch tomorrow while we're out here working. So I want to make sure that I make plenty because old Gary, <laughs> that boy can eat. And then all you got to do is kind of get in there and mix it together. Once you're mixing it, if it looks like you don't have enough seasoning, you can always add some more. But make sure you wash your hands first. You don't want the old hamburger juices all over your seasonings now. Come on. All right, now that we got all the seasoning mixed up in there, now we're going to add two eggs. And I'm also going to use some breadcrumbs. I'm using the Italian style on here. I always just get the cheapest breadcrumbs that I can get. Mix it in there, and that's going to help hold it all together. Now one day, I will get my outdoor kitchen fully built. This is just a temporary one. And I'll be able to do this a little bit cleaner. And I typically use quite a bit of breadcrumbs. And then mix all that up together as well. Now you don't really have to use the egg if you don't want to. But I find that it helps kind of hold everything together a little better. I kind of like to just fold it in back to me. Cuts down on the mess a little bit. All right, now that we got it mixed up, we'll put it on the cutting board. And then we'll start shaping it. Definitely going to be a good size meat loaf. Kind of pat the edges right here. Make it like it's going to be a big old like cube steak or something like that. That way whenever you put your tunnel in it, you can make a pretty wide tunnel. You don't have to put a lot of stuff in this. You put too much, it's definitely going to ooze out. I do do that from time to time on accident. Now that I got me a little valley right down here in the center, I'll put my cheese and my rice right here, and then I'll start kind of folding it up and sealing it up at the top. And cut it in one slice, and I'm going to stick it about right here. And then I'm going to do another quarter, same thing. And that should take me to the other end, and that right there will be plenty of cheese for this one. Hi guys, the rice is done. You listen carefully, you can hear the coyotes in the background, and also the cicadas. The rice is still kind of hot, so it's probably going to melt this cheese a little bit. I hope I don't regret doing it now. But I'm just using brown rice. I actually eat a lot of brown rice. It's a lot healthier than the white rice. There you go. Just put it over there like that. And then we're going to start folding this on top of it. Just be easy with it. Delicate. And just pat it in. <laughs> The trick is going to be getting it off this cutting board and getting it on that grill. <laughs> but there you have it, guys. It's all stuffed in there nicely. Got a nice uniform shape. Now we're going to put it on the big green egg. Now I'm going to cook this on indirect heat. Better to be safe than sorry. There we have it guys, a successful transfer. Now we're just gonna leave it and let it cook. And then once it cooks a little bit and starts hardening up a little bit, I actually take the spatula, get up under there and make sure it ain't sticking to the grates. 
but I don't plan on flipping this or anything with doing it indirect heat I don't have to worry about the bottom getting way too done versus the top it'll kind of cook evenly all the way around so whenever so whenever it's time to be done it's done without having to flip it and mess around less likely that you're going to get leaks and stuff with what you got stuffed in there all right we're going to let it cook for about an hour and then we'll take a look at it and then we'll uh, come back and check it out at the very end and give it a try very easy recipe guys anybody can do it sorry about the generator in the back but i needed the lights as you can see it's already starting to get dark out there Well, we're having a little bit of issue right here. It's starting to split apart a little bit. This side right here is doing all right. But none of the cheese and stuff is leaking out, and that's really what I'm worried about. It might not be the most beautiful thing, but it's going to taste good. It's actually cooking a little bit faster than I thought. It'll probably be ready in about 30 minutes. Hey guys, we're going to go ahead and make the mashed potatoes. All I'm using is some butter, salt, and pepper. One of the big differences is I'm going to try using almond milk. I really don't keep regular milk around here at the homestead because I drink almond milk. So we're going to try it out. I've never used the vanilla before in potatoes. Should be interesting. Should give it a nice little sweet flavor. All right, we're going to put just a little bit of almond milk. Just a splash. A generous amount of salt. And I love my pepper. And a couple of dabs of butter. It's quite a bit of potatoes. So we'll use quite a bit of butter. And then we're just gonna mix it. Looks like mashed potatoes to me. I'm curious to see what it tastes like with the almond milk in there though. Let's try it. Tastes really good. I'm digging it. All right, I'm gonna wrap this up. I believe that we're getting really, really close. With the meatloaf, we'll be able to try this real soon. Oh yeah, that looks amazing. I believe it's done, guys. It did end up splitting in the middle, unfortunately, a little bit. This side kind of held together. But that ain't going to change the flavor of it any. Let's get it off there, let it cool down a little bit, and we'll give it a try. All right, here's the tricky part. Ooh, that looks amazing. Well, that turned out good. You can see the cheese right there. Ooh, I think that's going to turn out amazing. All right, guys, I'm curious to see what it looks like when we cut into it. Let's take a look. Ooh, look at all that cheese falling out. Oh, so good. Look at that, guys. That looks so good. All right, guys, I think it turned out amazing. I think it looks amazing, smells amazing. Now let's see if it tastes amazing. All right, I'm gonna get right here so I can get some of that rice and cheese. Oh, this is gonna be a big bite. Hmm. definitely good it's got really really good flavor the rice is cooked really good and the cheese is real creamy and smooth I wish the presentation would have turned out a little better but as far as flavor you can't beat it this is amazing and very easy to make let's see some of those potatoes with the mushroom gravy on there mm. I mean good tonight and I think Gary's going to actually enjoy this and appreciate it right along with Mel tomorrow while they're helping me cut all the trees.
Did he do justice to your favorite meal? Mm-hmm. Mmm. <laughs> mm. Can you taste the smokiness? Mm-hmm. Mmm. <laughs> that looks so good. I'm gonna use a little bit of that meat. Scoop it all off together. Come on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Dude, the rice inside there with the cheese is super good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Makes a full meal. You don't even really it's have to make like, a side with it. It's almost like a volcano. Almost a volcano of loveliness. An explosion of flavor in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> but until we see each other again, guys, hey, <laughs> keep it fired up.